Hi there, welcome to lecture 12 in Soccer 3666. Um, Today is the, this is the final lecture in the course and there will be only one part this week. I'm going to keep it quite short because I know um, everyone will be busy doing um, their assessment items. So um, I'm just going to kind of conclude the course by introducing a new figure that hasn't really been looked at um, too much in um, the course already, but a really, really important one. Um, and this is the idea of the prosumer. Um, that uh, has been increasingly a figure to be thought about, uh, to, to use about um, thinking about the way that digital technologies in particular are a new realm of consumption. Now in many ways all the, all the stuff we've been looking at throughout the course um, has been, you could argue, has been dated by the past kind of 10 or 15 years since Web 2.0 in particular, um, where you know consumer activity has become increasingly online, um, communication itself has fundamentally changed, um, all these notions that kind of you know bring increasingly the digital and the virtual notions into our day-to-day lives as being completely normal. Um, you know the idea of the digital panopticon and all that kind of stuff. So in what some ways I could uh, I should put together a whole new course on that, which I think would be really interesting. Um, and this highlights in many ways how the kind of the new web 2.0 is is kind of brings in notions of production and consumption to people's lives at the same time. And this is what the, the prosumer, I think, is, is uh, good for thinking about those, those issues and those relationships. So the idea of the prosumer, um, a new form of kind of postmodern consumer, where there's simultaneous acts of production and consumption. And so we can think about this, you know, what it means even to be watching something like TV. So as in, you know, the 90s, in early 2000s, the notion of reality television and that kind of genre became pretty much the most dominant form on TV. The, the, people started to kind of question whether you could think about watching TV anymore as a kind of this cultural dupe, you know, lame drone type behaviour, um, you know, zombie type behaviour if you want to think about those figures just sitting there and watching the screen and not doing anything. If, you know, people were kind of actually contributing to what happens on the screen by, you know, voting out people and um, and that kind of thing. In that sense, the consumers start to take um, aspects of the production by voting, commenting, texting, and all that kind of stuff. The prosumer is also really kind of, you know, dominant in the space of YouTube, where YouTube is essentially an architectural framework provided to the public, but all the content, other than the advertising, obviously, is provided by the consumers doing kind of prosumption. So consumers upload videos, they also watch them, and then after they watch them, they'll do things like comment on them and rate them and aggregate them and all kinds of things. So presumption there is a kind of, again, a notion that the the person on the internet site is both producing content, content and consuming the site, and that changes the site and drives the kind of aggregation of content. So Facebook is obviously, you know, and social media in general is the office, obviously the key space where the notion of the prosumer is, is kind of helpful. Particularly when thinking about the ways that these spaces are just full of what um, many theorists would call immaterial labour. Again, these social media type sites tend to create frameworks, virtual spaces, but very little content actually other than the kind of um, ads provided through the algorithms that relate to the prosumption in the first place. So users create all the content through digitized performances of the self. Um, they essentially make other things for other people in their social circles to consume. They produce data to be sold to the companies They then use that data to advertise back to us. And what this produces is all manner of different performances of the self and different ways that people regulate themselves in these spaces. So if you're interested in looking at some really good research in that, check out Stephen Owen's thesis that I was lucky enough to supervise a few years ago, where he did an uh, analysis of um, the ways that people present themselves on Facebook in terms of ne being a neoliberal subject. Um, and there's a whole other wealth of research about the different ways that people perform themselves and prosume in those spaces. And much of the web today is kind of basically areas of prosumption. You know, other social media sites like, you know, Twitter and Snapchat and the like. Certainly, you know, all the dating sites are. Um, Pin interest uh, and is another good example of it. Most online games today are versions of prosumption. Um, you know, 
particularly things like Minecraft, where you're building your own wor- worlds, and Second Life, where you're building your own worlds as well. Um, Wikipedia, very obvious and one of the more original examples where the, all the content, again, is created by the community itself. Um, eBay and Amazon rely on it as well, where kind of the quality of things is increasingly rated and relied upon by the consumers through their customer reviews. Again, these things can be thoroughly manipulated. In the realm of news media, the, the role of comments more and more become um, actual news in and of themselves, and certainly over the last couple of years, the production of what we you know, euphemistically call fake news, produced not by media outlets, but by consumers out there trying to you know, mess things up and that kind of thing. The rise of the blog and the troll, blogs and trolls as you know, dominant figures in um, um, digital media. And certainly even things like Google Maps, these increasingly key infrastructures are actually constructed by the movements of everyday people and the way that people post uh, pins and and, um, track their own activity within that space. So this notion of the prosumer here is another kind of key figure to thinking about how um, consumption is done and performed in um, contemporary society and I think a particularly interesting one. But while things might change, a lot of these things still stay the same. So while there might be this rise of the prosumer, the digital space seems to um, both provide a kind of sense of rapid social change, but also you know, a lot of things still stay the same. Um, certainly, we seem to be increasingly tracked. Um, the, the, the digital realm can be seen as that panopticon, the destruction of the private and public sphere in many ways, just like um, the, you know, the rise of the mall. Um, These things increasingly put the consumer to work, so the prosumer is working, just like many of the aspects of McDonaldization pointed out. In a sense, you could even argue that this is kind of basic Marxist exploitation. Except in Marxist um, relationship between the ruling class and the working class, people are getting paid, where online we do it for free. These spaces also seem to be, you know, just see the rise of the same class problems, sexism, racism, racism that happened in our public and private space before these new digital realms. And, you know, for examples here, you can see the um, stuff around Gamergate and, and, you know, anytime basically a woman says anything online and the abuse that they cop. At the same time, there's a um, whole realm of, you know, new forms of politics around this. And, you know, again, there's been some really successful forms of consumer activism um, that have seen, you know, brands change their, you know, practices or behaviour or it and things like that but you know again as you know Naomi Klein's work pointed out around the you know anti-globalization and brand based movements of the late 90s early 2000s um, consumer boycotts can only do so much so the digital realm is kind of in many ways can be seen as an ambivalent space um, where both producers and consumers are often the same thing there can be forms of emancipatory politics and the same old same old um, sexism and racism as well So to conclude the course, um, the reading this week about the postmodern consumer is in some ways rather ambivalent and quite bleak, asks whether we are modern or postmodern or both. I think Bauman's work is particularly interesting here. He kind of says that both aspects of modernity and postmodernity are happening at the same time that does lead to this ambivalent um, liquid position. Um, But, you know, when we want to think about the kind of vast social problems that I've been talking about in the last couple of lectures. Um, It depends from what perspective you're talking about here. If we're talking about how much consumption, in many ways, many people around the world need more of it, and maybe the kind of, um, you know, dominant North needs to do less of it. Um, But it seems like in terms of the politics around it, that seems to be unlikely to happen. Certainly, you know, the key measures of consumption over the past 20 years, since this stuff has become relatively public knowledge around waste, around um, CO2 and all that kind of stuff. All the markets keep going up despite the, how aware we are of it. So it's kind of easy to end the course on a rather bleak notice note in that sense. But for those who want to kind of think a little bit more optimistically, I would suggest you check out Mary Holmes's um, recent book called Sociology for Optimists, where she kind of goes through many of these rather bleak problems, not just about consumption, but kind of around issues in society in general and talk about how sociology can provide um, much more positive 
um, in some ways optimistic ways of thinking about this stuff that may go towards solving some of the issues. Okay, so overall I hope you've enjoyed the course. It's been fun for me to put it together. It's been quite weird in many ways just sitting here talking to a camera and you, know, you can probably tell that I turn my face off a lot because it's, it's quite uh, weird to be talking to myself here and then seeing yourself on the camera. Um, but yeah, I do hope that this uh, course has um, gone some ways to help you understand uh, the broad issues around our consumer culture and the systems that we live in and by and through um, and the different ways that they influence, you know, our self-identities, our practices in every day and, you know, the very idea of whether we can be happy and satisfied. Thanks.